Classes don't just sit around and exist. They have various kinds of relationships with one another. So let's talk about associations. Associations show a relationship between classes. In other words, if there's a conceptual connection between two classes, we say those classes are associated. Often, associations imply a has-a relationship. An example will clarify what that means. Let's say we have one class, we'll call it the manager class, and a second class that we'll call the employee class. If we associate these classes by drawing a line between them, we could read this as a manager has an employee. We could also read it in the other direction, an employee has a manager. Now we can name this association if we want to be more specific than has a. So we'll say manages. You name an association by specifying the verb that names the kind of association and showing the direction in which that works. You can do that in several different ways. You can use an arrow here instead of a straight line to point in the direction of the verb. A manager manages an employee. You can also show it in the actual name. Now this would be better if I had a closed filled in triangle but this modeling tool doesn't let me do that. So I just use an angle bracket to point and, and it conveys the idea and that's the important thing. So the association here, as I said, is a manager manages an employee. You could also do it in the other direction. An employee works for a manager, as long as it's clear in which way this association works. You can also have more complex associations than one class on either side. For example, let's say we have a class called play. And associated with this class, we have the classes of director, actor, set, maybe we have a prop class, and so on. We can associate all of these classes with the class of play. And if we like, we can name the associations uh, or not. A play has actors. Actors have a play. A play has a set. A set is associated with a play, and so on. So this is another way in which you can associate classes. You can associate multiple classes with one particular class. You can also have reflexive associations. You can associate, in other words, a class with itself. This can happen when objects in a class can play more than one role. And this example shows you what I mean. You show a reflexive association by drawing a line that goes out of the class and then goes around and comes back into the class. And you name the roles and their actions to show how that reflexive association works. So we have here a class called orchestra. And an orchestra has members that might have different roles. So we have one conductor conducts many musicians in an orchestra. Now I'm sure you noticed just now this number and this asterisk, and these let us show multiplicity. Multiplicity shows the number of objects in a class that can associate with an object in the associated class. So back here with our manager and employee association, we might associate one manager with many employees. The asterisk means many or it can mean more. And you can put in the one or if you leave the one out it's assumed that you mean one. So we have a manager manages many employees. And there are various kinds of multiplicity that you can show in your associations. And this lays them out for you. You can have a one-to-one -one relationship a company has a CEO. And as I said before, you can either put the, the ones in or you can leave them out and they're assumed. As in the next example, this is a one-to-many relationship. One library has many books. Additionally, you can put the multiplicity numbers above or below the line, wherever it fits best. Here we have one lawyer represents one or more clients. If you want to show one 
up to an unspecified number, you use one, a couple of dots, and then the asterisk. So one lawyer represents one or more clients. If you want to bound the range instead of one up to an unspecified number, you can, you can do that as well. One teacher teaches one to twenty students. So if there are limits in class size, a teacher can teach a minimum of one student but a maximum of twenty-one students. You can show a multiplicity that allows an either-or. One deck has either 48 or 52 cards, depending on whether or not you're playing Pinochle. Similarly, you can have a zero or one. One house has either no attic or it has one attic. And then finally, this is an example of a relationship that's bounded on either side. One foot has five toes. So these are all different examples of how you can show multiplicity. You can have a one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many relationship, a one-to-many relationship that has some kind of boundary or that has an either-or on the many side.